Nearly a month after Donald Trump became the presumptive Republican nominee, House Speaker Paul Ryan has finally decided that he will let the public know he will support the candidate. He never used the word endorse in his op-ed. In the wake of a highly publicized meeting and phone conversation, Ryan writes this, quote, through these conversations, I feel confident he, referring to Trump, would help us turn the ideas in this agenda, referring to his own House Republican agenda, into laws to help improve people's lives. That's why I'll be voting for him this fall. The word tepid isn't in there, but it's probably easy to use that word to describe this endorsement. Ryan's vote of support came without warning to the Trump campaign and still without any commitment to public events with the nominee, other than, oh, maybe the convention. He is the chair of the convention. On many fronts, the welcome for the new leader of the party has been lukewarm. Georgia Senator David Perdue, though, is one of the few Republicans in the Senate saying, stop being lukewarm about it. Embrace it. Embrace Trump. And just yesterday, he laid out the case in a Washington Post opinion piece arguing that Trump is an outsider that the party actually needs, even if you don't agree with everything he says. Purdue ran in 2014 as an outsider businessman himself. Well, I spoke to the senator today, actually just moments before Ryan's announcement, and I started by asking him if his op-ed was intended to essentially be a plea to people like Ryan to get off the fence. Absolutely. I think what we have here is a candidate that has increased voter turnout in Republican primaries this year by 60 percent. He won Michigan and Mississippi the same night, and yet we have some people in Washington lukewarm about our candidate. I don't understand that. Uh, it's the Republican establishment uh, process. He went through that primary system, 12 debates, not one question on the debt, by the way, and he has prevailed as the leading candidate. I just don't understand why we're not looking this uh, as, as at what it really is, uh, Chuck, and that is an opportunity to win in some states where we haven't in a while, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Wisconsin, yeah. Michigan. So I, I think this is an opportunity for us to really, I think, finally, once and for all, <clears throat> call out the failures of the progressive liberal it, movement, as we've seen it, particularly in the last eight years and what we think we'll see under Hillary Clinton. But, Senator, is it possible that you're right and some of these Republicans that are on the fence are right, uh, Speaker Paul Ryan, essentially, you're, you're making the case, hey, this is an outsider needs a shake up. This is what voters said to you in 2014. That's the message Georgia voters sent. But I think the criticism of, of Trump is not that he's an outsider. It's the tone he takes. It's that he may be alienating Hispanics and, and folks like that. Can you? I mean, that seems to be what's going on here. Can you both be right? We struck a nerve here, and, and what we discovered in 2013 and 14 is that. Many people are, are voting more because of their frustration with Washington and the lack of results than they are their own ideology. And so what a lot of people in the party now are, are doing, I think, is trying to work on the, the platform. Well, that's, that's the old way of looking at this. Yes, these ideologies are, are, are permanent and they're consistently important to us. Economic opportunity, fiscal responsibility, limited government, individual liberty. But we can't lose sight of the fact that we have a nominee that is actually calling out the very things that people back home that I hear every weekend want us to talk about. Politicians, bureaucrats, and the media. Would you know, I personally it, like to see his tone a little different? Yeah. Well, that's, that's one person's opinion, but I can't argue with the fact that he has struck the nerve and has gotten to this point. And I believe the worst thing we could do was, would be to transform him into the yeah. image of the Washington establishment. Uh, I don't think he win doing that. I think right now he's calling out the things that we need to be right. talking about. How to save Social Security, how to save Medicare, how to stand up to our enemies abroad and make sure that we have the ability to defend our country. I believe CEO David Perdue, whether you were CEO of the Reebok brand or CEO of Dollar General, would be absolutely panicked at the talk of Donald Trump tariff wars with China. Would you not? Well, here's what I do support. Uh, first of all, I'm a free trader. I've lived outside the U U.S. a few times in my life and worked outside much of my life. What, what you hear Donald Trump talking about is leveling the playing field. Since 1965, we've had the war on poverty in the United States, and we have not changed the poverty rate in the United States since 65, even with trillions of dollars spent behind yeah. the Great Society. What we've got, though, internationally is we've reduced international uh, global poverty by some 60 percent or more. And what you hear Donald Trump is saying is, look, our, our workers in America, our businesses in America need at least a fair shake in terms of dealing with you guys uh, abroad. And we feel like we haven't had that fair shake in the but past. You, so do, I he's applaud not what he's say, saying, and maybe it's time we take a stronger stance on that. Are, are you ready to change your position on trade these days? Are you now not going to support a, a TPP under any circumstance? 
no, I'm supporting the process, and I haven't seen the final details of that. And what we're trying to work on now is to make sure that we get the right first step toward bringing in 11 countries that will give the United States most favored nation and influence people on things like pollution, trade, yeah. labor policies, and so forth. If we don't do that, we lose that, that, those abilities. Your, All I'm your saying nominee. is that within that is a negotiating process to make yeah. sure we get a fair shake with these foreign partners. But your nominee is nowhere near where you are on that. I would much prefer to see a change in direction guided by this candidate as a Republican president, certainly with regard to the, social, with, uh, the Supreme Court, as well okay. as getting the economy going, as well as coming up with a workable plan to save Social Security and Medicare, and at the same time, recapitalize our military so we can provide for the national defense. I'd well, much rather have this guy doing it than Hillary Clinton. But in all fairness, Senator, your, what you just articulated as the agenda that you want him to do, I have not heard from him. Well, you're I think hoping, you have. I think you're he's hoping talking that about he's going to adopt right this agenda. Uh, well, I think, look, the worst thing you can do is ask this guy right now to put everything he's going to do out in policy. I mean, personally, that's not what people at home want to talk about. This is what the political establishment is missing, Chuck, and I think many of the media are as well. The mm -hmm. people back home are more frustrated by their, their observation and their frustration with the lack of results in Washington than they are the ideology. So what we want to do, what people inside yeah. the bubble want to do, the political bubble, they want him to come out and conform to their... Uh, ideology or their way of thinking so they can pin him down on this. What I'm trying to do is say, look, wait a minute. He's going to put people around him. We're going to attack these problems. I'm fully convinced that he has the wherewithal to put the right team around him, much right. more so than Hillary Clinton. We have the few, lowest worker participation rate since 1978. Poverty rate hasn't changed. More businesses went out of business last year than were started for the first time in our history, Chuck. This is an economic fiscal policy that is failing. And I believe this guy will absolutely set us in the right direction. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.